So it's a great pleasure to have Mario Pianta with us, uh, who is professor uh, at the University of, of Urbino and also research coordinator of research programs in the Academy of Sciences in Rome, Italian Academy of Sciences, the Lincei. Um, and he uh, gave a talk uh, at our institute on the space for industrial policy in Europe, uh, emphasizing that there is a very strong need at the moment to think along the lines of industrial policy. So let me ask you, Mario, first, what is your concept uh, of industrial policy? You know that industrial policy was fashionable quite a long time ago, became unfashionable now. So in which sort of form do you see a role for industrial policy uh, currently in Europe? As an effect of the crisis, uh, European economies have uh, undergone a massive uh, change in their industrial and uh, service activities uh, with the massive losses of production in uh, uh, southern Europe, in, in the weaker regions of other European countries, uh, with increasing divergence. Uh, industrial policy is a way to conceptualize uh, uh, a public interest uh, strategy for uh, reconstructing economic activities uh, so that major imbalances are avoided, major uh, distortions are avoided, and new opportunities for growth are spread uh, more evenly uh, across Europe. So um, we need a way in which uh, uh, public policy plays a new role in uh, mobilizing resources, may possibly at European level, for creating uh, uh, the right incentives for private action, but also being directly involved in investment, because unless there is a new wave of, of public investment, uh, we are afraid, uh, I'm afraid, uh, there will be a, a risk of uh, continuing stagnation in Europe. So basically, as far as I can see, there's a triple <coughs> role. One is that there's a slump in overall investment activity and public investment activity. Public investment can play a very important compensating and possibly also initiating role in, as incentive for investment overall. Secondly, the imbalances, which you say that some parts of Europe have deindustrialized dramatically. You gave a figure of Italy and Spain still being 25% of the level of industrial production from before the crisis. And thirdly, uh, to uh, think about uh, the overall economic structure in a sort of competitive setting at the global level. Are these the three directions in which you uh, see the role of industrial policy yes, in Europe? Yes, exactly. <coughs> With this uh, uh, expansion of uh, uh, aggregate demand uh, through public investment, which would allow uh, European uh, uh, economies to move out of the current stagnation uh, with uh, a reshaping of the industrial policy. In the, by industrial policy we mean the ways in which democratically decided uh, public policy affect what is produced, uh, what is consumed, the way economic activities are organized, not just in manufacturing but also in services, uh, combining a uh, role of public action uh, not just in terms of uh, public procurement of goods or providing public services but also or providing infrastructure but also giving uh, the private economy uh, a set of uh, trajectories uh, uh, along which private decision can in private investment can can evolve let's uh, be concrete uh, there are three priorities where um, public action could be targeted. One is clearly environmental sustainability. There is no way, uh, even if uh, Europe goes back to the uh, uh, trajectory of growth before the crisis, that we can continue to move uh, in a trajectory of growth which is uh, destroying the planet, uh, destroying uh, uh, raw materials, destroying natural resources, uh, and uh, not addressing the issue of climate change. Europe has taken important uh, responsibilities and targets in this uh, domain, and we have uh, them in Europe 2020, we have them in the uh, Paris uh, Conference on Climate Change. So we have to act on this, and this means uh, restructuring a large part of economic activities in the direction of uh, sustainability. The second direction is uh, uh, the development of appropriate application of information and communication technologies, which uh, have not reached all the areas and all the potential activities where they could be used to improve uh, uh, production and services. And the third one is uh, uh, in an aging continent, uh, uh, which has uh, some of the best uh, health systems of the world, we have to conceptualize uh, welfare, caring and health uh, services uh, as an area whereby, where we concentrate our efforts to improve uh, not just uh, 
the, the living condition and the, 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 the services we provide, but also we improve the uh, technological base, the research base, the knowledge that we have behind these uh, activities in health and services. So it's interesting that you conceptualize industrial policy not just in the sense of industry or manufacturing, but you include a wide range of service activities which can also be targeted. Uh, let me become, uh, try to be more specific on the instruments you would use, which you would utilize to uh, be successful. We are, after all, in a mixed economy, so in which form would public instruments, public policy instruments, be used to further particular industrial or technological trajectories, uh, also to potentially have an impact on the industrial and market structure in particular areas? <coughs> well, first of all, uh, we have to realize that uh, Europe is already doing uh, quite a lot in this regard. Uh, if we put together the regional and structural policy of the European Union, if we, if we consider uh, different forms uh, of uh, support to uh, innovation and competition in firms, uh, the support of small firms in particular, if we include the environmental programs of the European Union, uh, all this together amounts to quite a substantial amount of resources which already go to uh, the decision of firms and to economic activities. Then we had the experience of the Juncker plan uh, the, 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 the package of investment uh, called EFSI, um, supported in particular by the European Investment Bank uh, with a guarantee from the European Union, which uh, uh, filled uh, a gap in terms of uh, uh, providing funds for higher risk, higher uh, social relevant uh, project, uh, which however mobilized a very small amount of resources so far. So we have already had the recognition by the European policies that there is a need of public investment and public action in this regard. Um, so the way, the practical ways could be um, a mobilization of uh, uh, European-wide resources through special uh, resources by the European Central Bank or um, other forms of uh, uh, Europe-wide uh, finance, uh, which could go to a, a program of public investment. This public investment could be managed by the European Investment Bank, which is already there, or could be managed through the mo model of uh, European structural funds, which is already monitored, already controlled in terms of their efficiency and the ability to have an impact on the economy. And then at the national level, state investment banks could take responsibility for directly being involved in investment projects or building partnership with private firms where relevant. Clearly, the model of public investment banks, which is quite successful all over the world, which was successful in the previous decades of European industrialization in most countries, have to be reconsidered. Re New models of governance have to be developed. So there are problems of efficiency, avoiding corruption, avoiding waste. Of course, these are urgent needs, but we can find a technical solution to these problems. So what we, we need desperately, however, is to mobilize uh, these new tools uh, which uh, can combine uh, efficiency concerns but also the ability to operate uh, uh, countering these uh, dangerous trends toward divergence. Um, one question which was asked by a number of participants in the seminar was how to counterbalance the very uh, strong tendencies towards agglomeration of industrial activity, but even of uh, advanced service activities in a few centers in Europe, uh, manufacturing around Germany and the Central European countries, uh, business services in centers like London, etc. Yeah? We see the big problems of peripheral regions and, of course, the European South. And the danger, of course, in, uh, with almost all industrial policy instruments is that the more successful regions, the more advanced regions, will also be more successful to get access to the instruments and the funds which would be provided by industrial policy. How would you contact that? Well, there can be simple rules. For instance, uh, three quarters of the funds available at the European level should be 
um, uh, invested in uh, poorer um, areas, uh, for instance, the weaker countries uh, of Europe, which have been uh, losing ground compared to European averages, and uh, um, within the richer countries, within Germany, uh, the money and the project should go to the weaker regions, uh, the former East Germany regions, for instance, um, in order to create a coherent uh, rebalancing effort. Clearly, this is not going to solve the problem of uh, 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 historical differences between more developed and less developed regions, both within uh, countries and uh, across Europe as a whole. But uh, at least it would stop a very dangerous acceleration of these imbalances, because what we are monitoring now is that the whole of Southern Europe, including uh, um, uh, successful regions uh, such as the north of Italy or the north of Spain, which were in uh, very similar conditions with the northern European countries are now losing ground and risk losing their ability to maintain their productive base. As we said, the 25% loss of industrial production has meant a lot of job losses, but more structurally, a downgrading of the economic activities in these areas, which has long-term effects. Uh, in terms of labor, you have a massive migration of uh, highly skilled, highly qualified researchers, engineers, and so on, from Southern Europe to Northern Europe, which, of course, in turn, may open a, a vicious circle of uh, downgrading of uh, human resources, which uh, is associated to the downgrading of economic activities, with uh, a very dangerous weakening of uh, um, uh, the, the, the coherence and the convergence across Europe. So, so slowing down this process would be an important achievement of such a program. Lastly, uh, let me come to a political question. In the course of the crisis, we've seen a great hesitancy of uh, member countries to pool resources to counter the crisis. Um, we've seen that in the area of uh, how to resolve the banking crisis. We've seen it in the area of uh, any form of uh, dealing with the debt problem and the historical heritage. How would we, uh, would your scheme involve such mobilization and to some extent redistribution of resources across countries in the European Union? And if it, this is required, uh, would that be politically feasible at all in the current circumstances? This, uh, where do we get money from is a crucial question. And we have the European Central Bank, who, which produces a large amount of uh, uh, liquidity and uh, gives the liquidity to banks who do not uh, know how to invest. So we have to overcome this uh, gap, providing a channel whereby the liquidity created by the European Central Bank, for instance, goes to the European Investment Bank for funding these investment projects. These would be additional resources. There is no need to pay an interest on, on, on these. Uh, there is no need to uh, constrain the distribution of these um, on the basis of our uh, criteria which are different from what we said. So we go uh, to the regions and the areas where there is more need, not there is more uh, potential profit, because this could be an investment effort where uh, profit uh, and uh, high returns take second, uh, uh, second priority compared to the need for uh, rebuilding economic activities for a long-term perspective for returns which are obtained over a longer time span in terms of stability, in terms of technology, in terms of research, in terms of maintenance of competences across Europe. So if we manage to get these uh, European Central Bank funds through the uh, European Investment Bank or other uh, financial arrangements, this could be uh, allocated then to state investment banks in each country or in each region, uh, or to uh, public-private partnership, which may be relevant. And in this case, we can have uh, available funds in a, a way which can be accountable, transparent, and efficient, uh, with a high, strong monitoring, of course, by European um, agencies. In addition to this, we have also 
state uh, uh, potential for investment. Uh, there is a simple decision that could uh, make a life easier for everybody, excluding investment, public investment from the constraints of uh, fiscal uh, policies at the European level. If we take out a public investment, which is, there is a, are in huge need, not just in Southern Europe, but in Germany uh, itself, uh, we could have more space, more policy space at the national level for uh, using public funds for virtuous uh, uh, efforts to improve the, the structure condition, the public services, the, infra, the infrastructure and so on, which of course would complement very nicely this uh, program of industrial policy. Thank you Mario. You can find quite a lot of uh, published work by Mario Piante on our website on these issues and going further on a recovery plan for the European economy. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Michael.